Greetings fellow Karnat. We're in the brand new Subaru Outback. Bit of a favourite of mine actually, the Outback. It's always had that kind of go anywhere, do anything, be anybody type of image to it. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to this new Outback because it's very, very heavily revised from what we've had before, particularly on the inside. But anyway, let's get it fired up, go for a drive, and we'll find out all about the new Outback. Now the 2021 model year Outback comes in three different flavours. You've got your basic Outback at $49,990. You've got what we're driving, which is called the X, and that's uh, $54,990. And then at the very top of the totem pole, you've got what they call the Outback Touring at 57,490. And of course, you get different trim levels as you go up. The, the Touring one ends up with chrome wheels and the sunroof and Napa leather and a Harman Kardon sound system and a few other little bits and pieces that might make life more pleasant. But I think this one that we're in, the X in the middle of the range, is the sweet spot. By the way, that $49,990 entry level price into the Outback range is exactly the same price that the original Outback was 25 years ago when it launched here in New Zealand in 1996. Huh, interesting isn't it? I don't know, is it? Maybe it's not. Now all Outbacks have the same oily bits underneath them, so they all run a 2.5 litre Boxer four-cylinder engine, naturally aspirated, so not turbocharged at this stage, delivers 138 kilowatts and 245 newton meters, and the same eight-speed CVT transmission. <gasps> CVT transmission, yes, that's right, it is a CVT transmission, but it does have eight selectable ratios, which is one more than it had previously. Uh, so they've actually spread the range of ratios further apart so you've got a lower first gear and a taller eighth gear which means more relaxed cruising at the top end of things and a bit more sprightly acceleration in the bottom end of things and now that that new transmission is on board it's allowed them to uprate the towing rating on this car too it's got an extra 200 kgs of towing capacity so that now means it can tow 2000 kgs braked uh, which is good which is good because the cvt transmission and its 1800 kg uh, tow limit on the previous iteration wasn't really helping sales against other suvs in the market but now it can tow 2000 kgs so that's good The main thing you notice when you jump into it is, of course, the inside. It's so much nicer than it's ever been before. We're in the X, as I say, which is the middle of the range. So yes, you, you are um, initially taken by these, um, these water resistant seats and the upholstery on them. But um, that's just one of the things that is so much better than it's ever been before. The dashboard top, for instance, instead of being that scratchy plastic that it's been for so many years with Subarus, it's now like a rubberized uh, finish in here. And it's just, you know, it's not leather, it's not that padded, but it's just enough to give you that extra tactile reward. You can still find harsh plastics down the bottom of the doors, but just above that you get this nice, um, in this case, the water resistant fabric. Um, it's nicely colored. And as I say, once you get to the top surfaces, they're more rubberized than they've ever been before. And that's a real big enhancement. Plus this dashboard uh, with this massive 11.6 inch screen, that's really cleaned up the visuals that, um, that assault you if you're sitting inside the car. You know, you used to have a very small little screen here and it was all a bit sort of laggy and just, you know, 2005 feeling, you know. This is bang up to date. It's really easy to use, it's quick to respond, it's accurate to the touch, it's got all the facilities you want on it, um, plus a few more that you'll probably never use. Um, it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although you still have to cable your phone to the car to get those to, uh, to activate. But it still has um, some functional buttons too, some actual buttons that you can push, you know, on the side. Things like your front and rear uh, window demisters, your uh, temperature controllers, a volume knob, a tuning knob for, uh, for audio. So it has a couple of those practical buttons which means you don't have to constantly dive into the touchscreen. There's one button I think uh, they should have added to those physical buttons and that one extra button would be auto start off. You can turn the auto start off but you have to go into the car settings and do that and it's a couple of menus deep into this glass screen here but it's generally 
bloody good. Same with the dashboard. The dashboard is a, uh, a digital dash. It's not really configurable. You can't change it to sport settings and have your tachometer assume the center position and glow red and all those sort of sports oriented car type features. Don't go looking for those in here because, hey, guess what? It's not actually a sports oriented car. So it's a really nice, clean, uncluttered look in here now. One area I still think they can clean up a little bit and lose a couple more buttons is the steering wheel. I still don't know why they have two buttons for telephone, one to pick the phone call up, one to put the phone call down. Other cars seem to make do with one button that just changes the state from whatever the phone's doing to what it should be doing and what it's not doing to what you want it to be doing. So one button could go there. Um, they also have this SI drive program button here in the um, on the steering wheel and that's Subaru's basic drive mode adjustment so S is for sports I which is where it defaults when you start up is intelligent which of course means fuel saving or economy mode generally all I've found from going from I to S is that it drops a sort of a gear ratio um, and it also um, has a slightly more uh, crisp throttle response but it doesn't really make the car go any faster. So SI button, yeah, I don't know. For me, I could easily live without that for the sake of one less button on the steering wheel. But that's all the bad stuff basically out of the way. It's comfortable. It's really comfortable. You've got great visibility, nice thin A pillars, um, you know, obviously you've got the, the Outback's higher riding position uh, than a regular car, so you've got that sort of semi-SUV type of viewpoint out the front and sides of the vehicle. You've got nice big mirrors, you know, yeah, I, it's a really good car. Up top here on this dash, there's this other little window here, and that's the driver monitoring system. So when I jump in the car, it knows me, and it says hello blue on the dashboard. Uh, and in the um, touring version, for instance, it'll actually use that technology to identify different drivers, two different drivers, and adjust the seats, the memory seats, uh, things like that for the driver just by looking at who it is. But the other thing this driver monitoring system does is uh, monitor your attentiveness. So if I look at, for instance, you, on the camera for a bit of time. I'll just find a nice straight piece of road here where there's no traffic coming and uh, we'll see what the driver monitoring system makes of this long piece to camera. Uh, and it's um, not doing anything but oh, it is. it's saying keep eyes on road, keep eyes on road. Uh, what else can we say about the inside of the car? You've got USB connectors down here, you've got USB connectors uh, in the back for the rear seat passengers. The outboard uh, rear seats are both heated in this trim level. They're heated in the front as well. Pretty nice electric seats on the driver's side here. Um, is it an electric seat on the passenger side? Oh yeah, and electric seat on the passenger side as well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really nicely decored and fitted out. It's got this water resistant upholstery, which is kind of fruity. The base model, the 49990 entry level Outback, gets just cloth upholstery. So I think for the extra four grand that this costs over the base model, you get this upholstery, you get the, uh, the roof rails with little green things on top, you get a bunch of um, green Outback signs, you get black badging, you get the nice grey, dark grey alloy wheels. So yeah, as I say, I think this one is a sweet spot in the range. A couple of features that have been built into the car that um, might be of interest. It's got a driver's side airbag for your knees so you don't come a guts or against the underside of the dashboard in a frontal crash. And for the passenger, they get an anti-submarining airbag in their seat squab. So there's, in the seat cushion, there's an airbag that would go off in a really big frontal crash that stops you going underneath the seat belt and ending up in the, in the passenger's footwell. So hopefully none of us would ever experience a crash like that and ever see that feature deployed but it's nice to know that that sort of safety equipment's on board the Outback. Also new for the 2021 Outback is this new slimline, sort of Jenny Craig version of EyeSight. It's much uh, shallower now. It doesn't take up anywhere as much uh, top of the windscreen as it used to. Uh, it's really good uh, software because it has color cameras up here that are looking forward, doing things like laying keep assist and all that sort of stuff and adaptive cruise control and speed sign recognition and all those other great 
eyesight features. The one thing I did notice is because it's got these color cameras, it recognizes brake lights. And when you're in adaptive cruise control, if it sees the brake lights on the car in front go on, it'll actually um, button off your throttle and start to brake your, your own car before the distance between you and that other car in front actually starts to, to, to uh, close up. So I really like that because it shows that Subaru's software is thinking like a driver would or a good driver would. See the brake lights, cover the brake pedal and uh, just be in that state of readiness. So that's really cool. So the car is slightly bigger than it has been before. It's 50 millimeters longer and about 35 millimeters wider. Uh, still has the same 213 millimeters of ground clearance and still has the same overall height. But I think that extra 35 millimeters of width um, has really benefited the, the cockpit here in the, in the passenger compartment. It feels noticeably bigger on the inside. And uh, it's got a great amount of legroom in the back. Um, I've got my seat set as I normally would for driving and there is oodles of room uh, behind my seat. And the boot is grown by about 10 litres, it's a little bit bigger than it was before and of course you can um, fold down both back seats, get a nice flat load space right through to the back of the front seats here. Uh, the other thing you'll notice on the back, it's got a really cool little trick, is that um, you can open your boot with your elbow. You know, a lot of uh, cars now, you, they get you to wave the, your foot underneath the bumper and uh, open the boot without using your hands. But it's all a bit weird having to stand there on one foot and trying to find where the sensor is. And I've seen people sort of staggering around with armfuls of groceries trying to find how to get their bloody boot to open with their foot. And it just looks naff, frankly. But Subaru's thought of a better system. Um, if you've got the key in your pocket, um, as soon as you walk up to the back of the car, you just position your elbow or something like that close to the, the Subaru badge, and it gives you a little confirming boop, and then uh, she opens. So you can carry your big grocery box, give it a bit of the elbow, boot opens up, too easy. Um, and the boot opens and closes pretty quickly now too, a bit quicker than it used to on the automatic open and closer. It's a very comfortable car to drive around in, you know. It's no powerhouse, that 138 kilowatts and 245 newt meters, it's sufficient, but it doesn't make the car sprightly. It's more stately than that, I guess you'd say. Now there is talk, possibly the turbocharged, I think it's a 2.4 litre turbocharged uh, Outback that some markets have already, uh, finding its way to New Zealand and Australia, maybe at the end of 2021, more likely if it does arrive in 2022. Now that packs 193 kilowatts and 317 newton meters, I think. So quite a lot more power and torque than this vehicle has, um, but until it's here, this is what we've got, 138 kilowatts, 245 newton meters. So because it's got this nice high ride position, it's got this very supple and intelligent suspension system that gives you a very luxurious and quietly muffled ride. The fact that it doesn't lurch off the line quickly or spring into overtaking maneuvers, you know, with aplomb, it kind of doesn't really worry me too much. Now look, there is still a little bit of rev flaring in evidence if you really stomp on the throttle, but it's only if you really stomp on the throttle. But for 95% of the time, and probably for 95% of the people who find themselves behind the wheel of an Outback, you would never know it wasn't an automatic transmission with a regular torque converter and regular ratios. And that's comforting. It's got lane keep assist, blind spot warnings, it's got autonomous emergency braking, forward collision warnings, all those sort of expected um, safety features are on board here. I love the fact it's got this um, passenger's door mirror uh, camera that can show you the front left wheel as you're coming into a curb for parking. There's also a camera on the grill, in the centre underneath the, the Subaru badge. And we mustn't forget that the Outback is an incredibly talented workhorse off-road. Um, some of the footage I'm going to put in the video here is actually shot from the, um, the launch event and it shows the vehicle going through the Nevis Road, going over four-wheel drive courses and things like that where you see this massive cross-axle articulation and the fact that it can drive itself over you know lumps and bumps in the terrain which frankly most suburban oriented SUVs just 
wouldn't. They just wouldn't do that. They just couldn't do that. It's far more capable than you would expect to look at it on these road tyres. I'll tell you what, this particular car has been through places where most SUVs and even some more hardcore four-wheel drives would be challenged, you know. Um, that's why this particular vehicle is missing the, um, the proper attachment on the front for that black under engine tray, the, the black plastic uh, finisher underneath the engine was ripped off this particular vehicle uh, during the, the dealer and press launch when we were going through some very steep terrain through some, some forwards and things, uh, someone drove this car a bit too fast and, uh, and uh, wedged the front underneath something and pulled it off, that's why you'll see a little blue piece of packing tape holding the engine protector up there. The new Outback, the model year 21 Outback, is significantly improved over previous versions of the Outback. I'm a real fan of it. Uh, as I said before, I like the Outback because it can do so many things for so many people. And the sheer practicality of the car uh, really enamors it to me. But now that they've flashed it up inside, majorly flashed it up inside, like it's you know, it's 90% better than it's ever been before with these nice soft touch rubbery sort of surfaces on the dashboard tops and things like that. It's genuinely a really, really very good car. It's not often that I hop out of a car and think, you know, there's nothing really wrong with that car. But I think when I hop out of this car, that's exactly what I will say. Yeah, the Subaru Outback, it makes a really compelling case for itself. It's a bloody good car.